Hello YouTube, my name is Alphonse Zeus of Team Gradelock, and here I am with another episode of Team Gradelock Unlocks the Week. Uh, here we are going to be discussing the latest Cardfight Vanguard episode, locals results, as well as any future plans we're going to be uh, having in store. So uh, let's get to it, let's get right to the episode or ride uh, 132. We're going to be the conclusion of the battle between Wet, Ren and Asuka. Now, if you haven't seen the episode yet, you know the drill, kind of pause the video, so watch the episode come back, or you can just, you know, click on the number in the description to skip to right to the local results. Now, Riot 32, pretty much we already have, uh, you know, Requiere going to go into the reverse form, and I thought it was a, a pretty decent fight. You know, of course, they also had some flashbacks as well, like, you know, Asuka, like, you know, rising up the ranks, and, you know, defeating Kill. And I still remember when I saw that Barky Manicore, I was like, damn, man, that was, that was like, out months or even like a year ago before that even happened and I can't believe they would uh, flash back to that and uh the way Ren was playing his deck was just completely crazy and you know he he's a pro he knows already and then especially he the way he starts out for his units were way better than uh when Corrin starts out the units because Corrin she just had, had it all all across her arm and not a single card to drop Ren pretty much had it's like it's like you use Qualia kind of like just break open the deck and then like each card is still in place like there's no moving it's as if like there's like a string attached to all of them and so he can all have the dark and I gotta say that skill is pretty broken um especially when you have Doreen behind blast of dark because you counter blast one instead of two for uh blast of dark revengers skill now I'm not sure what's the priority or what comes first because um I know Blast, there, there are at least, you know, when both times when uh, Ren used in the episode, you know, first he used Blast of Dark Revenger skill, and then he used Doreen's skill. Then, you know, on his final turn, uh, Ren used the, uh, Doreen's skill first, and then used Blast of Dark Revenger skill later. So I'm not sure how the ruling goes on that, but if it's that flexible, damn, man, like, Shadow Palin's got a really good uh, theme going on, as well as very good tech. Or, you know, not only saving up counter blast, but to use it multiple times to like, to just retire units. It's definitely something that I took note of. And luckily a reverse is pretty damn good. I do like how, you know, you just lock a unit, call you enough and soul, that unit gains 5k. So pretty much, you know, you don't have to worry about having a booster there. I think the way that uh, the set 12 set is going to be going is that you have units that are either going to be locked or, you know, you want to clear the space for some field to be like an anti-link anti, anti uh, joker tech. Now, you know, I think it was like Ren, he broke ride twice with uh, Mortgage of Phantom, which is pretty interesting. And how, like, you know, that counter blast one, get a superior call, uh, Shadow Paladin from the deck. That's pretty good. I know that the Avenger deck, when, when that deck comes out, it's gonna be really, really good. I, I, I see a lot of synergy with that deck. It's definitely something that you know people would look out for. I feel that, you know, and Ren, Ren just displayed such a great amount of skill on that. I honestly thought that like Asuka, like she was just so cocky throughout the whole match, just laughing, taunting, and you know, like wanting Ren to be like her puppet forever. And you know, sometimes it's like, yeah, I get it. It's like let's just Ren beat you up or like just beat you in the fight so that you can uh, get rid of your reverse state. Now, it was actually kind of cute at, towards the end after the fight was over when Ren addressed uh, Asuka's queen. I thought that was pretty sweet as well as kind of like a, you know, an interesting just, you know, poke moment where, you know, Ren would just kind of play along to what a reverse Asuka was saying. And regular Asuka didn't even know what the heck happened because she was reversed the whole, like the whole time up until that point. In a way that you know, like, she was just, like, hesitating and stuff, and Suiko was just, oh my god, she just, like, helped it along so much, when I was, like, I'll explain it later, it was, like, it was cute when Asuka was, like, did I say something new to you, and, and when you dressed as queen, it's like, wow, and after that, it's, like, you know, I took the hand up, had, like, a tender moment and stuff, and, you know, I won't forgive it the second time, and then Bo was, like, oh, you can come if you want, and then she immediately goes into, like, the, uh, Commander phase like yes yes Ren is like oh why right. because I have to give mad props to Ren on that though he did more work in just a couple episodes than some of the other protagonists have made throughout an entire season it's it's really crazy how much work Ren is putting in and it's too bad that 
like Aichi and you know like some of the other gang they don't even like they wouldn't really notice by now you know it's not like a day have passed by it's only just a couple hours but you know when do you think this, this has been going on for at least like a week or so yeah he would pick up on something and finally head over there even Kyo is putting in some work man he's keeping on like you know fighting those nobodies fighting just beating them using his you know spike bros deck it's it's silly and and th the fact that you know him and his like his team and him or him and his team they managed to get, do all that and still not lose a match that's very respectful i give him mad pops for that i really do like that and then also at the end when they go into uh tetsu's room and just like oh final boss and then the stage elevates up to the roof and then it finally sets the stage between Ren and Tetsu. I think this battle is going to be pretty epic. Because the way that I've seen the Amon cross ride. Wow. That is a broken card. I, I think. Like. There's no counter blast cost. You only need to like you know lock. A rear guard to activate that skill. And you can just lock the rear guard behind. Uh, Amon. Because. Automatically, you'll be swinging for 19 by himself if you know if you if you meet the minimum requirements and you have you know uh, the uh, 10k amount in the soul, and then that's <laughs> remember it gains a thousand for each of the soul. And the like, regulars they would wait, they would have a lot more in the soul than six by the time uh, reverse amon is out. I actually am considering trying to see if I can make that deck because it's very very good, and dark red goes could hit for some silly. Silly numbers, something that you know other clans like dreamed of. Even even break right clans would be like, I can't even, like I I can add 10k, I can add an extra critical, but to swing for numbers that are like greater than like 30, 40k, I'm like, wow, you know, that's <laughs> it, it, it's it's pretty silly overall. Um, and I, I'm definitely looking forward to the next few episodes. I want to see how Ren is going to do this. If Ren is going to be Tetsu, I think that yeah, he's going to make a clean sweep. You know, unreverse those three, and then see what happens from there. And hopefully, we can finally get Aichi and his gang over to uh, Fukuhara High School, so they can start battling and unreverse the people as well. Unless they have some really crazy, uh, crazy plot twist or so that's going to involve maybe you know, uh, Team Kaiser and uh, the Dimensional Robos, or maybe even you know some of the other new support from like Nubatama, Granblue, etc. And I think that all of that's going to channel into the future Card Fight Vanguard episodes gonna be a really good like you know nail biter that you want to watch this well, i'm definitely looking forward to the fight against tetsu uh, i want to see how he's gonna you know utilize his own uh his own skill just to kind of foreshadow what dark regular players should be playing especially with the mon uh type deck Alrighty, well i guess that's it for the uh card fight vanguard episode now let's get to the local results uh this past friday and saturday we had uh the sneak peek for the extra booster uh six which was the uh, Dazzling Divas Bermuda Triangle uh, Extra Booster. It was pretty much to introduce the Prism, the Safe Ride Chain with Coral, and the uh, Eternal Idol Pacifica. Now, the sneak peek that we went to, we had the $30 one and the $20 one. $30 one is the one with the same prize support, $20 one without the prize support, but you just get you know your six boosters and you don't have to go through the draft format. Now, there were only four of us that actually entered the $30 event, and you know, we were alright, we thought like, you know, it, it was cool and we knew that, you know, we all liked this clan ever since the beginning and, you know, we know it's like, you were talking about random stuff like, you know, I don't know how many people are going to jump on this, but, you know what, at least, you know, we actually put in the time and effort and, you know, we've been actually anticipating this for quite a while. So we already know that, you know, we had interest in Bermuda since the, uh, since the beginning. And so, uh, when Draft Rules format came out, the only uh, hollow I got was a just double R Celtic. Which was alright, and the rest were okay. I know the guy next to me, he actually had a vert and a, uh, yeah, a vert and a Eternal Idol Pacifica, which is pretty broken. And then the one across from me, right in front of me, he pulled um, Coral and he pulled a uh, Perfect Guard, which was silly. And then the other guy, he pulled like another double R, I think it was just the uh, Grade 1 version of Celtic. And, you know, so we went along with double elimination. I managed to place in third because, you know, the only hollow I had was that. And my only grade threes were, like, the 5K, uh, you know, limit break along with a 2K on rear guard uh, when, she, when they attack. 
and then you also have the other grade 3 which is you know when a grade 3 is placed on this that unit gets 10,000 or 200 turn it's uh it was pretty good and plus you know I wasn't able to win the mat either because uh first place gets one mat and then another mat is raffled off to a random person and you know unfortunately I wasn't the one that won that mat but but on the bright side at least the guy that got that won the mat from the raffle he actually pulled like three corals in like one day so it was pretty much kind of calling out to him so I'm like hey you can make the deck because it's actually pretty good consistent and you know if you miss the ride chain on grade 2 you have another chance to grab the grade 2 which is silly because wow you just made ride chains like completely uh, almost completely safe even better than like you know the Tsukiyomi and Galahad ride chain and then you know I bought I also had in my uh, $20 sneak peek as well and what I pulled from there was, uh, you know, the grade 1 version of Celtic um, and an SP Labrador. So I was pretty excited about that. I didn't expect pulling Labrador at all, nevertheless an SP. So it was actually pretty nice that I actually had that. Um, and then, you know, after that we had a regular tournament, which was double elimination. Uh, I played Tsukiyomi and, you know, team grade lock. That was pretty much the theme today. We got grade locked quite a bit. Uh, I know that on my uh, on my third game, I faced against uh, a friend from uh, you know who's a veteran local at game on, and I got grade locked both games. It wasn't really the best uh, situation, but you know what? You know if I get grade locked, that's okay. And then it came down to the final two, which was um, you know a friend from another team at the game on called Dark Matter, and uh, Henry. And you know Henry was running the uh, Azure Dragon. Beast uh, Jai the cross ride build and uh, the other member of uh, team uh, Dark Matter he ran Gold Paladin uh, Spring Breeze Messenger Pelennor build and the thing is though it went down to the wire although that the last three games he played Henry got grade locked three games in a row and that's how you know that's how team Dark Matter took it and I was like wow well that's not that bad. And then when I made like a Facebook status about it, uh, a friend from Team Dark Matter, another member, he was telling me like Team Gridlock's being locked, the gri Team Gridlock's grade locking again, and then like kind of like the Team Rocket thing. I was thinking maybe we should just do that each time, like you know we get grade locked. I thought it would be a pretty funny theme. And so you know prize support was distributed, and then by the time that tournament was over, almost everyone that got their prize support <laughs> pulled at least one Labrador. But none of them were SP, so I was like, I kind of, I find, I kind of felt special about that. Um, and, but I at least those were the local results. I also pre-ordered two boxes of the set, hoping to pull Labrador, hoping to pull at least enough cards so that I can, like, you know, make the break ride deck and have it playable by the next time I go back to game on. Now, I think the next thing that I want to discuss is actually the uh, Way Schwartz, uh, Way Schwartz part of our channel. Now. For what, actually, before I go into waist shorts, uh, I actually recorded a two matches. It was just like you know, uh, casuals with a friend from uh, Game On, and you know, we said just record these two two games and see what happens. And so, you know, because uh, my friend he actually uh, built the Galahad ride chain build out of set three, and he wanted to face my Sukiyomi. So I was like, all right, cool. You know, we'll just make this like you know a casuals match and just see how we do and how the ride chain works or not works. You know. It's kind of like that. And then soon, you know, we managed to record two games. They will be up later today, just like as, you know, labeled Grade Lock Cat, uh, Team Grade Lock Casuals, you know, Tsukiyomi versus Galahad. And, you know, I hope that you guys will enjoy that because then you get to see, like, all right, two different ride chains going up against each other with a similar uh, ride chain effect. So, you know, hope you guys uh, like that. That will post later in the day. And then finally, now we're done with Vanguard. Now it's going to Way Schwartz. Now, uh, Game On hasn't held any particular tournaments yet, but Way Shorts is growing in popularity. Um, I know that a lot of people that have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and Vanguard lately, they're starting to switch over to uh, Way Shorts. And so, you know, we had a few members of our team purchase trial deck boxes. We had other members, you know, and other uh, uh, locals uh, from Game On and Vanguard. They also picked up Way Shorts trial decks as well, and we just kept playing each other. I'm hoping that Game On is definitely going to pick up, you know, a Sword Art uh, online booster box so that I can buy, like, one of those and, you know, test my luck to see if I can pull another sign card again. Uh, I think, yeah. And even after the Vanguard tournament event was over, we played some Way Schwartz games. It's, uh, I don't know, if the impression that we got from that is that when you steamroll 
you steamroll unless they come out with some miracle play that you literally cannot figure out how to do. Because especially when you go into the late game, it's hard to find counters. And especially when you don't get in those three attacks, you won't have that clock that you can, uh, you won't have that stock that you can use for encore and stuff unless they already have an encore, uh, Unless they already have an encore uh, effect or skill on the card itself, outside of just the general encore. Now, if you guys also want to learn more about Way Swords or you want to see some actual, just you know, casual matches concerning that game, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, you know, definitely open to any new suggestions. And of course, you know, we'll always be uploading videos like this next week. I want to see if I can upload even more casual games and you know, try and get either more deck profiles up or just see you know like uh, any more local results that we can come up with i know that the bermudas is definitely going to be a tier one to, or tier zero deck even it's just that the impression i got from the uh, bermuda triangles extra booster is that you really don't start returning stuff until late game a lot of the grade ones and grade twos in deck you're either like you know your normal set of grade twos like you know your 10k vanillas your 12k attackers if you know, the, if the Vanguard has, you know, the same name or so, and, uh, you know, they have a, an interesting 12k attack for one counter blast. Now, it doesn't really start returning to late game, which I can understand why it would be hard to kind of set all that up, because, you know, if you don't have, you know, Vert, the break ride, or if you don't, like, have that counter blast ready for, that special counter blast ready for Labrador, then you're going to be pretty screwed on that one. Anyways, you know, if you have any other questions or any other topics you want to talk about concerning Vanguard, Waste Sword, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic even, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends to let them know that, hey, you know, Team Grade Luck, we got this uh, nice little staple going for the week. And, you know, we'll be willing to listen to suggestions and just, you know, talk about, uh, talk about all the trading card game scenes even more. Uh, that's it for me. My name is Alphonse Yusuf from Team Gradelock, and I will see you guys next time.